Thomas Campbell, and he said, he was just a fellow traveler with all of us on the park side. You can say that his is a one-pointed direction towards oneness, as his adopted name suggests. Brother of peace, love, Oh, Sister Vera Sairam, thank you. Thank you for all this beautiful inter interaction. I hope I can live up to it. Uh, so anger is just a reality. You know, that's the, as a human being, is one of the emotions we express besides joy. And then anger is, is the other side of it. If you don't get what you want, or you get angry or uh, no reason sometimes it's just uh, too many things going on in life and then that, that itself uh, propels us towards anger i'd uh, like to have discussion input uh, as we go along at each stage uh, i don't have prepared questions but i do have some comments put on this slide like the very first slide is uh, with the caption, spiritualizing anger, Swami is saying, cultivate the attitude of oneness between men of all creeds, all countries, all continents. I think uh, the Sai Sarathi quote uh, said, the purpose of, uh, of our life is, is to spiritualize, to realize the divinity within. So, uh, I would like to hear comments about what do you think of uh, Swami's comment of oneness and, uh, you know, he, he, he has uh, told us in discourses many, many, many times that he was just one, he became many, and then uh, he is in each one of us as an indweller, Atma Rama, within each one of us. He is the prompter of all our actions, inactions, and then he continued to capture each of those thought process as we lead our way back to him. We have come from him. So what do you think of uh, this comment about feeling, at, develop the attitude of oneness? Please uh, share your thoughts, comments. Yeah, anyone. <laughs> It, it would help the discussion, please. It's a study circle, so.
and that's what unifies and unites us all too. So that's one aspect of oneness. And the other aspect, I mean, there are many dimensions of that oneness, is also that we all uh, share so many common experiences, uh, situations in life. Uh, nobody goes on the path alone. to that oneness as well. So one is the divine and the other one is the temporal of what we experience on this earth. Yeah, thank you, Sister Vera. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. It's uh, right. It's uh, I, the, the experience, the divinity within each one of us. As a, as a child, a uh, child welcomes uh, everyone and it doesn't discriminate as the child gets older through worldly education and the values instilled by the parents and the surroundings, all of a sudden it changes. And then, uh, so that, uh, that, 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 that creates a distinction. I am different, the other person is different, etc. Anyone else, please? Yeah, Sister Sarita. Oh yeah, okay, so it's rather, please, yeah. Yeah, that uh, cultivation of oneness is also uh, the oneness in nature, our unity with nature, our unity with animals. Uh, we could experience that also as part of the oneness. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sister. One second. <laughs> that, thank you, sister. Rosie. Thank you. That, yeah, it's oneness of all creations, including animals, plants. Like we also started the 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 universal prayer, invoking God's presence and blessings to all of creation, including the animals. Sarah, uh, sister, Sarita. Thank you. That 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 I believe uh, Swami always focused on that. Uh, so that's why he addressed each one of us as divine embodiment of love. He never called uh, as, a, as a king or a queen or a servant or by the label of the profession of the activities we do in our life. He treated everyone at that ethnic level that the same divinity, that spark of divinity, which has, uh, which sustains life within us, and, and, and that is, that's the Shiva aspect within us. And once it leaves the body, it becomes Shiva, the, the body. So I think uh, he, he, that's what he was trying to tell us, uh, at least to my understanding, that I will give you what you want, but I'm, but I want, I want so that I can give you what I have come to really give you, that is uh, to awaken the divinity within each one of us. I think the main organization goal also says that uh, uh, let the light of love, I'm paraphrasing, light of love brighten. I have come to light the light of love within, within you and let it uh, shine brighter and brighter and brighter. When he says love all, that's the oneness aspect of it. That uh, if you say love someone, love this one, if you have this characteristic, you love, you don't, no, it just, uh, it's, uh, it's just, a, that's the Advaita concept. That's the, 
that is the Ramana Maharshi was talking about, or uh, every soul, Shankaracharya, whoever, to get to that stage that uh, to transcending the body consciousness as we increase our awareness, go and higher and higher. So that then the these negative emotions like anger, jealousy, greed, envy, pride, the six enemies of uh, our mind, which creates the mind, mind creates the bondage, mind creates the liberation. So, uh, so uh, anyone else before we go to the next slide, please. Brother Tom, please, yeah, please. Yeah, thanks. This is uh, already a great uh, thought to think about. I like this quote because uh, he's, the quote uh, Swami has there sort of answer, answering how to, you know, when he says cultivate that attitude, that how do you do it? Spiritualizing anger. And for me, that means like we can agree that anger is one of the, you call it a negative emotion, or it's like it's one of the enemies. It's a, but we can spiritualize it by you recognizing it and using us to further our growth because I mean, you're realizing that it's, it's, it's always ego-based, you know, and, uh, and the quote he even says, the attitude of oneness between man of all creeds, countries, and continents. So it's like we're still living in the dual world, in duality, and there's still like this oneness between things. And the uh, anger, when it's not spiritualized, separates anger when it's spiritualized dissipates quickly with the because it reminds us of the oneness that's gone that's my that's that's actually me over there you know my my neighbor my and jesus had the same thing going with love the enemy you know that's what i mean that's the deep truths of all the teachers are one so thanks for this one oh thank you brother tom yeah that's very very well uh, explained uh, that uh, uh, yeah, we have to spiritualize the anger to to walk toward the path of oneness. Uh, anyone else? Uh, otherwise, we're going to go to the next slide. I would say, Brother Raj, yes, that uh, in order to have this attitude, one should also have humility, because many a times uh, in our state of anger. Uh, we tend to have a sense of self-righteousness and uh, we validate ourselves uh, as a justification and uh, it takes a lot of courage to recognize uh, the difference between the two and to be really humble and to seek uh, divine help in overcoming the anger, uh, seeing how we are ourselves biased or prejudiced, that way. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Thank you. That, uh, that, that humility, that ego aspect uh, to, you know, the edging the guard out part, we have to, uh, I mean, I have to work on it also in just, uh, because it's all fleeting moments sometimes. I'm at peace, sometimes I'm not, and then um, some little thing bothers and it may turn into a big thing if I don't subside it, so. All right, so this slide, uh, uh, to me, always a look at why we're doing all the spirituality, the sadhana, silent sitting, prayers, meditation, discourses, or why are we doing all these things? You know, that's, uh, so I had to, come to the purpose of life. Uh, so as we already touched upon, that is to manifest the divinity within, within each one of us. And different paths are many, but the goal is one. We may follow the spirit Christianity path, the Islamic path, the Zoroastrian, Jainism, Buddhism, all teach us the same thing that we are here to be of help to the fellow fellow being, service to man is service to God. All that aspect, uh, the same thing, whether we speak uh, bigger terms like realizing God, liberation, as purpose of life, as simple as just to enjoy. So that, uh, you know, uh, 
the difference between the joy and bliss that uh, joy is just temporary it's just fleeting you know uh, I crave some for, for, for some food and the food uh, the hunger is satisfied and that after four hours three hours <laughs> then uh, again I'm hungry so the joy dissipates you know and then also joy is in between as it, Swami has said pleasure is an interval between pain two pains you know Whereas bliss is eternal, that is the Sat Chitananda, that uh, truth awareness and, uh, and bliss. So let's look at, uh, so I mean, the other point is that, uh, I mean, simple terms, uh, you know, every, every wants to, everybody wants to be happy. That's why we pursue constantly better education, get a better income. And family, children, uh, then uh, friends. Uh, uh, it's all about uh, sense satisfaction. That's what. That's not the true joy. The true joy is to go within, as Swami is saying. So let's li listen. Uh, there's a short video clip. Uh, Sister Rosalina, please uh, play it for us. Oh, Prabhu, Prabhu, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sound is not coming. Can you read the subtitles? Yeah, yeah, really, I can read it. Thank you, Sister. Thank you, Brother Tom. Uh, Brother Tom has put the video in the chat, uh, the link. Uh, I don't know if that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you check the share sound? Was anyone saying something to me? Uh, yeah, I was 
saying that you check share sound. The sound is not coming on the video. The sound. See, that has to be done by. Uh, okay, let me see. No, you have to do it if you're sharing your screen as co host. Okay. Let me stop sharing and. Let's see. It's really an important video, it's a short one also. So. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, thank Make an effort to enjoy the sweet. 
Thank you, Prabal. <coughs> so, Swami has uh, reiterated there that uh, he has installed the software, the soul awareness, it's, it's there. Uh, that uh, Atma, the consciousness is there. Uh, I guess we need the software to uh, to make use of that uh, installation of the spiritual. He has installed the spirituality in each one of us. Uh, uh, right, right on arrival, we just uh, we are blocking the full usage. We are not using the full capacity. <laughs> so uh, then, uh, Swami talking about. Uh, proximity to divinity is the way to go to experience that bliss. So I would like to hear your comments, thoughts, uh, questions, uh, and then we can go forward. Side on. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Vera. Yeah, I think uh, all the negative consequences of anger, uh, there is a slide coming up. And, and then, uh, I mean, what, what, did, what do you all think of the, what the, Swami is saying, what the purpose of life uh, in, in terms of uh, liberation, the moksha, and uh, the, I think the, the point uh, we'd like to focus on proximity uh, to to God, uh, is it physical proximity? Is it? Uh, uh, I mean, I think one time Swami has said. I think somebody, one of the great speakers, talked about. It's not enough to be near, but you have to be dear. I think uh, Swami said, you know, go to Prashanti and sit in Satsang, have darshan, sparshan, sambhashan, all that. But that that. So, please, uh, Sister Faith, please. And may I also add that Swami said that uh, we are as close to Him as we are to our own selves. And um, I, I love the passage that Swami spoke about the sacredness of life. And for me, Swami restored that sense of the sacredness of life, of all life. And one of the things that, that stays with me, I heard Tommy say in a discourse, the guru is like an eye surgeon. He removes the cataract from your eyes and he restores for you your own true vision. And what is that true vision? We are God looking at God. If we identify with love, if we identify with our divinity, more and more through our spiritual practices and through seva, then that's what we'll see everywhere we look. And it's also something that, um, that we can pray for. You know, I pray, Swami, let me see everyone, and including myself and all of creation, the way you see it, through eyes of love. And, um, yeah, thank you. When you were speaking about oneness, 
Yeah, yeah, please, please, uh, please, please share, share, share your thoughts on this. We know that, you know, that it's, it's the strongest problem for you. Please share it. jobs, in our errands, in our cooking, <laughs> um, we're here to experience the divine within through love and service. And so all the activities and all the differences that we may, all the diversity that we may experience, you know, these are the images projected on the screen. Anyway, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Beautifully, beautiful, uh, beautifully put and then uh, wonderful sharing. Yeah, it's right. I think that is very right. You go with uh, unity. I'm sorry, purity, unity, unity. I think uh, I may have mixed up the sequence, but the, everything starts with the purity. That purity of uh, uh, once we cleanse our mind, continue to cleanse our mind. Just like daily bath, daily rituals, we do to cleanse our body through the spiritual satsang, discourse, and chanting, remembering, namasmara, all, all those uh, process to, to, and then uh, to, 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 to get the, to, 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 to put forth the love in that service, in our action, in our thought process. I think uh, Swami gave credit to the Twink Sisters from Australia he went out from the interview room when they were sitting in the interview room and then told the people in the veranda and everyone, those two individuals uh, with their prayers does more service than all of you put together. So the, the, the pure thought is, uh, is, is absolutely essential, you know. My, my mom used to say, you know, what, whatever she asked me to do, I said, you know, try to do it with her. Good thought, don't. So, I mean, it did dawn on me at that time what you were saying, but Swami saying our intention, our intention. Swami looks at, you know, Swami is Baba Priya, not Bahya Priya. You know, it's, it, he's not impressed with the action outwardly. I did this and that, you know, just how, what kind of feeling I put forth in that effort. So, anyone else, please. Yeah, thank you, Sister Rosalina. Yeah, so it's a powerful prayer. You know, I'm God and I'm not different from God. Living in present, uh, all that helps. Any which way, you know, that's why I even sing the brother, you know, bhajan, uh, remind me, Lord, who I am, I'm peace, I'm love, and et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, others, others, please share your thoughts. Rajak. 
Weiter. Bitte, why is this law, Sari? Sei mal so Europa, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, Brother Tom? Yeah, thank you, Tom. I think uh, I mean, each of us has to make you make the journey towards God and merge back to Him. I mean, that's why I know that uh, if I have a plate full of food, that doesn't satisfy the hunger for someone else. It's very well said that we, we cannot explain our our joy and bliss and uh, in that in the darshan line or remembering some pleasant things uh, with Swami. So that's something each person has to, through this, uh, cultivating that Prema uh, Swarupa aspect of it, uh, we can experience that. Sairam, um, anyone else, please? Uh, or we can go to the next slide. Okay, uh, I think we touched upon uh, the effects of anger. The most important I've seen over and over again when, when we're deep uh, in anger, then get out of control and uh, many times, I mean, then you speak the words we don't mean and, you know, that's it, the end of relationship, you know, it may have been many, many years in building, but one second, a uh, few words destroys everything, you know, the whole search for the words are so powerful, it you know, can damage the person for a very long time, even if may carry it to the next life. So, uh, uh, the, uh, maybe we, we can share other, other from brother, brother sisters about uh, the consequence of anger. Yeah, but the Tom said, sticks and stones can hurt my bones, but name, yeah, I mean, no, sorry, let me just go to the question. Yeah, but uh, names can never harm me, not so, yeah, 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 thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, please. Right, yes, Swami has said that the, um, the wound inflicted with the sword will heal, the wound inflicted with the tongue, it may not heal. This takes us back to our five values and practicing it in certain speech is so important. And sometimes I find that these emotions that we don't want to have, like anger, they have information for us. And sometimes I find that I need to understand why I got angry and kind of work it out within myself with Swami. Sometimes maybe something does need to be said, but usually not at that moment. Usually, um, we benefit a lot from taking time to reflect and then speak to you know, words said in anger, as you just said, they, they, they do great harm. And yeah, and sometimes if I look at why I'm angry, I can do a little self inquiry and grow a little bit from it, you know? So, um, yeah, anger gives us some information about what we need to work on, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I put a 
words and speech really high up there. It's really important. Thank you. Thank you, Sutta Fed. Yes, I am so. <laughs> I am so Paramo Dharma, that's everything, uh, uh, you know, in, in talk, word, and deed, uh, especially the words, uh, even sometimes facial expression, even if we don't say it, we, the people who are around us, they, they can pick up uh, that negative vibration. Uh, so, and, and then, um, the anger is one step away from danger, you know, Swami has said repeatedly, moment of anger can take away uh, in a mountain of good you have done and also it uh, deeply affects the immune system uh, many of the illnesses uh, you know they is connected to the suppressed anger uh, unexpressed unexpressed anger because we ex you know uh, uh, the person didn't uh, treat the way or we expected something uh, so let, let's go to the next uh, slide i think we have yes yes please please please, please. Yeah, thank you. And thank instantly you. that feedback is there. You become aware. Oh, and then, sorry, I shouldn't have said it. But others will carry on long and long, so that's the thing. Yeah, th thank you, sister. Thank you for that. Uh, that's why a psychiatrist is one of, psychiatrist is one of the uh, money-making profession in this country. You know, people love to go and uh, lie down on the couch and tell their problems and why this... Uh, too, too much interrelationship, you know, the anger is part of that uh, psychotherapy analysis, etc. You know, uh, let's go to the next slide, please. And then. Thank you, Brother Jack. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we skipped the slide uh, causes of anger. Uh, the one before, Sister Rosalina. Uh, the, there's one, there was one more slide. It was uh, causes of anger, body identification. Yeah, yeah, this one, yeah, this one, this one, yeah. Uh, so, uh, just briefly, we can talk about uh, uh, the causes of anger, and of course, the body identification, the ego connects to that, and our likes and dislikes, and if you don't like something, uh, dislike something, then right away, you have an opinion, anger, you know, escalates. Uh, expectation, um, the... Uh, yeah, Brother Tom said uh, all these causes are related to the ego. That's hundred percent correct. Uh, the the who is it, who is it that expects likes and dislikes, etc. That's also the comment from Brother Tom. 
uh, and reasonable desires and then you know when they you know uh, you know I, I want to be you know, the richest man for example you know then then you know, uh, I'm the richest man in the spiritual sense I'm a spiritual billionaire but you know <laughs> so you know unreasonable desires also causes anger you know uh, my I, I grew up with an angry father that it was he was very because of he lost his father my grandfather passed away at, when my father was six years old so only child and you know, a lot of frustration a lot of failures a lot of things he was very very angry he, he would just just like that so I think Swami put me in that situation <laughs> the first 20 years of my life to um, to uh, to make that spiritual progress not to not to um, come back to I think if you can read this quote uh, this anger is the harvest yeah please please wear it. sister wear it. please go ahead to read it Okay, Any, anyone else wish to share the thoughts and causes of anger? I also read, I think one of the discourses one is that you know, depression, uh, you know, the, the just uh, being not recognized, many, many of those feelings uh, sprout from that. I think it all starts out from the childhood, you know, when the child is neglected or feels neglected. They may have the food, shelter, clothing, but you know, psychologically they are not corrected. If you don't feel that love, it, it, uh, that uh, it suppressed anger comes out in uh, later years and then it affects uh, all relationship, you know, spousal and children, you never make peace without something. Okay, Sister Vira said the ego rises because of a separation from God. True, true, yeah, very true. Uh, please, someone else, uh, share your thoughts. I guess we are not angry, so we're not saying anything. <laughs> uh, Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Fear, right? I'm very yeah, tired. in the basic course, course, I mean, in psychology. Yeah, the, right, right. Thank you, thank you for that. I think, yeah, that uh, the uh, brother Tom said uh, the saving grace is we are not our condition constructed self, not our story with all the trauma associated with it. And as Vera is saying about fear, who is that is afraid, not the real self within us all. Thank you, thank you, I think, for bringing that, uh, the, the, <clears throat> the soul aspect into the discussion, yeah, that, thank you for that, yeah. Uh, anyone else? So perhaps we can go to the next, uh, next slide, we're almost approaching the end. The yeah, next slide, uh, oh. Uh, no, the one before that, Swami's suggestion, how to control anger, please. Yeah, that one. So, I mean, a couple of things Swami uh, said, uh, you know, uh, not, not to react immediately, I know, to, and then uh, Swami said, drink a glass of cold water, walk away. <clears throat> That's something I, I, use, I do a lot, <laughs> anytime there's some tension, or, leading to anger, I go for a long walk <clears throat> and when I come back, it's all my is subsided. And Tommy also said about taking cold shower. Can we watch this video, please?
Thank you, Guru Prabhu. There are a couple of comments which, uh, sorry, uh, there are a couple of comments which came in uh, the chat. Let's see here. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Sister Noelina said, uh, sorry, where is that uh, chat? Qualities that uh, can fill anger, values like compassion, acceptance, love, understanding, humility, and surrender. Thank you. Yeah, those are all very apt solutions. And then Sister Vera said, three questions to ask ourselves. Is it necessary to speak at this moment? Is it going to help? What purpose will it start? Will it serve? Sorry. So those are all the comments there. Uh, I think one of the things I tried to, uh, okay. Uh, Brother Tom said these three questions are so helpful. Yes. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, in, a, in a discussion sometime, it the you know walking away is not feasible you know like in any, any kind of you know if you're in a group setting or discussing some point i think drinking a glass of cold water or getting up or taking a deep breath may help there i think more important is uh, like i like to follow that i'm like a firefighter that i, I don't uh, try to add fuel to the fire more you know, the, the negative response to in, increase the anger, you try to diffuse it uh, in art to just to uh, silent and uh, nodding and that may help. It has worked for me and then, you know, uh, other, others may have other suggestions how they deal with it. So in a practical sense, in terms of, uh, uh, sorry, I think there's a couple of chat comments. Uh, Sister Vera said, when we get angry, the SOS method is to start the mantra that calms the situation. Thank you, Sister Vera. Brother Tom said, seeing Swami in the opposition helps, knowing he resides in that heart as well as mine. But what if it is a wrong, wrong, it's an angry Swami we have faced, you know, the Shiva aspect of Swami? How do we deal with that? I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's go to the, I think we are almost time, it's almost 7.30. The closing comments, please, the last slide. And then you, everybody is feel free to share the thought. <clears throat> it is the angry ego is not the real person. Oh. Sister Faith said, Sairam, thank you for the ride and everyone for the most beneficial conversation I have to leave. Thank you, Sister Faith. Have a nice evening. So uh, let's look at this quote from Swami. Uh, to get angry is but the effort of a moment, but to remain peaceful, to become unaffected by the ups and downs of life is the result of years of training in spirituality. That equanimity that Swami expects us to as we progress. Uh, and also I, I think uh, uh, I think we touched on that, uh, becoming aware that we are getting angry, that helps then to take appropriate action. And then uh, the only other comment I would have is that uh, it's part of life, it just uh, we, we, we find our own solution how to cope with the anger. You know, I, I think uh, sometimes the spiritual anger is good. Uh, that is spiritual anger to Swami, you have to help me here, you have to, I mean, that, that type of, you didn't help me here. That conversation with the divinity, uh, it, it's, it's good, it's not a negative side to it. So I, don't, I think that Brother Jack has raised his hand. Brother Jack? Any last minute thoughts from anyone, please uh, share, and then if not, Yes, I don't. Uh, thank you, 
brother Raj. Um, did someone want to make a comment or an intervention? Okay. Uh, thank you, brother Raj. This study circle will manifest in your own life and philosophy, that of oneness, and the Atma that is in us and in all of us, and this consciousness to be installed as spirituality in every aspect of our lives. And we also talked about the need for purity, which leads to universe, universe, unity and then divinity. And uh, it's important to be every moment in that consciousness of our divinity. And uh, as the last quote said, uh, anger can be momentary, very impulsive, and totally destructive. So, um, as Swami said, it's a lifelong effort to reach that spirituality, to be above the prey of anger, and to live in bliss and in that oneness with everyone. And certainly, Brother Raj, we will do our homework, and as Tom always says, following a study circle or a workshop, uh, there is always homework 